Amen. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. For this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Bless the Lord with me today. Good morning, beloved, and welcome to worship here at People's. It is good to see each and every one of you. For those of you who have chosen to worship with us in person, thank you. Thank you for your smiling faces underneath those masks. Thank you in advance for your amens and your laughter. Thank you for your spirit. And for those of you who are watching us online, thank you for worshiping with us. Please know that no matter where you are gathering today, our worship is enhanced by your presence. I say that because I believe each and every one of us brings something special into worship. We all have our own individual journeys and testimonies. God pours out God's spirit among us each and every day. And when we arrive here in worship together, we all get to dwell in that space where your spirit connects with my spirit and your spirit connects with the next person's spirit. And together, we can feel the fullness of the Lord. So it's my prayer today that you will feel the fullness of the spirit. Rev is gonna preach on one of my favorite passages of scripture, and I pray that you will see new life today. I pray that you will feel the breath in your body, that you will feel the spirit of God move. And so Rev and I will save our announcements and thanks until later, but we are so excited because it is jazz worship today. And so we're gonna hear some great music. Special thank you to the Jazz Society. We are excited for this worship experience. So will you settle your spirits now as we prepare to hear this call to worship? To the God who dwells with us, stop by today. Remind us that your spirit flows deep like a river. Remind us that your spirit flows through us and in us. Remind us, O oh God, that you breathe new life into our weary bones time and time and time again. Today, God, we have journeyed to have an encounter with you, so I'm asking God that you give us a fresh encounter. I'm asking God that you speak to us in our situations. I'm asking God today that we are able to experience you anew. So stop by Holy Spirit like only you can. Come, let us worship God together, beloved. Amen. Amen. Will you all please rise in body and our spirit as you are able as we proclaim together our song of praise. <laughs>
The Old Testament reading this morning is Psalm 112, Blessings of the Righteous. Praise the Lord. Happy are those who fear the Lord, who greatly delight in his commandments. Their descendants will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches are in their houses, and their righteousness endures forever. They rise in the darkness as a light for the upright. They are gracious, merciful, and righteous. It is well with those who deal generously and lend, who conduct their affairs with justice. For the righteous will never be moved. They will be remembered forever. They are not afraid of evil tidings. Their hearts are firm, secure in the Lord. Their hearts are steady. They will not be afraid. In the end, they will triumph on their foes. They have distributed freely. They have given to the poor. Their righteousness endures forever. Their horn is exalted in honor. The wicked see it and are angry. They gnash their teeth and melt away. The desire of the wicked comes to nothing. The word of God for the people of God. The Old Testament lesson is Hebrew chapter 13, reading from verses 1 through 8 and 15 through 16. Let mutual affection continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing that, some have entertained angels without knowing it. Remember those who are in prison as though you were in prison with them those who are being tortured, as though you yourselves are being tortured. Let marriage be held in honor by all, and let the marriage bed be kept undefiled, for God will judge the sexually immoral and adulterous. Keep your lives free from the love of money, and be content with what you have, for he himself said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can anyone 
do to me. Remember your leaders, those who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their ways of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Through him then, let us continually offer a sacrifice of praise to God, that is, the fruit of our lips that confess his name. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrificing are pleasing to God. The word of God for the people of God. Thank Thanks be God. to God. Please read the affirmation of faith with me. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus, crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death. God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Near 
the cross, oh Lamb of God. The scenes before me, help me walk from day to day with its shadows. Hoping, hoping, trusting ever Till I reach that golden strand Just beyond the river Oh, in the cross of Jesus. We thank God for the cross of Jesus. Well, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. If you're glad to be in the house of God this morning, won't you join me in giving God a thanks and praise this morning? 
Well, we thank God here at People's Church for the worship of God through the gifts of jazz. Jazz is a unique contribution to the spirituality of our people. Born out of the blues and sorrow songs, out of spirituals, uh, the combination of the juke joint and the church house. <laughs> jazz, a liberating form of worship and praise to God. So we continue in that theme of liberation this morning by turning to the word of God. We've been in a sermon series over the last few weeks entitled Hinge Moments. Hinge moments are those inflection points, those crossroads moments uh, when one makes a decision in one's personal life or as a nation or society or as a church about the direction that one takes. And today, reflecting on Jazz Sunday, we'll continue our sermon series on hinge moments by focusing on the art of improvisation. The art of improvisation. If you'll turn with me to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37. I will invite you in your own devotional reading to read verses 1 through 14, but today we'll look at verses 1 through 7. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones. And he led me around among them, and behold, there were very many on the surface of the valley, and behold, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy over these bones, and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin. And put breath in you, and you shall live. And you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a sound. Someone say with me, there was a sound. There was a sound. And behold, a rattling. And the bones came together, bone to its bone. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God indeed stands forever. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Speak, O Lord, for we, your servants, are listening. And we need to hear a word from you. Hide Brandon behind your cross, and may you come forward and speak a word to us, your people. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. What do you see on that piece of paper? Is it just a scribbling, a, a dark note, maybe with a dash on it and some lines? What do you see when you look at the table in front of you? An onion and some rice, some beans and tomatoes. What do you see when you look at the world around you? The basic ingredients of life or trouble and chaos? What do you see when you look at the news? Do you see a world falling apart or do you see the creative possibilities of something that can be born anew? Can the tomatoes and the rice and the onion suddenly become gumbo? Can the blank notes on a page soon become Jesus, keep me near the cross? Can the chaos of the world emerge into something that is life-giving and beautiful? What do you see when you look around you? That is the question offered here in Ezekiel. They are an exilic people, having faced the trauma of violence and economic devastation. The ruling elite of Israel have been carted off into Babylon, taken away from their homes, and now they are in exile. They have faced a cataclysmic event that has changed their lives and rocked their world. It's not news for you. We are not the first generation to endure a cataclysmic event. 
We are not the first to endure a pandemic. No, we are not the first to have endured trauma and horror and racialized terror. Indeed, it is in the marrow of our bones. Adam Sewer in Atlantic Magazine, in writing about the Reconstruction, says that our ancestors have always faced times of great peril and great promise. Here, the people of Israel are in captivity. They are lamenting all that has been lost. They are unsure of what life holds for them. They sing Psalm 137, verse 4. How can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Like Bob Marley and the whalers, they begin to cry out by the rivers of Babylon. There we sat down. Yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. Yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. In mournful songs, in blues moans, they cry out Ezekiel in the midst of social isolation and despair, uncertainty and grief, and in an insurmountable situation is transported by the Spirit of God into a vision. And all he sees around him is a valley full of dry bones, bleached, by the sun. These brittle and dried out bones, we're told in verse 11, represent the hope of the people of Israel. These bones represent those who have survived devastation and are now in exile. These bones are a metaphor for those who are now living on the other side of a cataclysmic event. Their hearts cry out, our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. They sing sometimes. We feel like a motherless child a long way from home and we'll keep preaching. Yes, we may somehow be in a sense of normalcy on the other side of the pandemic, but we cry out as those with those who dwell in exile, how can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? When our nation wrestles with even the possibilities of forgiving the debt of those who have high student loans. How, when when our, our, our nation puts the face of poverty on black women when uh, black women are not the largest percentage of those impoverished in this nation. Uh, uh, how do we sing the Lord's song in a strange land when racialized terror still meets us day by day, moment by moment? How do you sing the Lord's song in a valley full of dry bones? I don't know about you, but what do you see? And in the middle of this valley, the voice of the Lord appears. O mortal, can these bones live? Now I know that you all are good church-going people, and so don't ask a bunch of questions of the Bible, but I do. And I wanted to know, God, how can you ask such a question? Rev, uh, 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 how can God ask in the middle of a dried up valley, can these bones live? Of course, Ezekiel goes, God, you know. Ezekiel stands in a bold and prophetic tradition before God in the midst of a valley full of dried up bones in a hopeless situation in a city where people spend half of their paycheck on rent and a nation that would rather cut off unemployment benefits than pay folks equally and a nation that will send off $735 million to fight somebody else's war but can't feed its own children. How do you sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Can these bones live? God God, you know. Can these bones live? Can my life live again? Is there more for me, God? Is this all that my life is meant to be? The voice of the Lord responds, prophesy to the bones. O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord to the God, to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. Now, why is God telling Ezekiel to prophesy to the bones? Why would God uh, tell Ezekiel to waste his breath preaching to dried up 
brittle and lifeless bones, if this is a metaphor for those who have survived, if this is an exilic people, why is God asking Ezekiel to preach to them? After all, I'm sure they've heard all kinds of speech, and yet they have found no hope. I'm sure they have listened to MSNBC all week long. I'm sure they've already listened to CNN. I'm sure somebody listened to Fox all week long. They have listened to the prognostications and commentary of everybody else all week long. So why does God want to waste God's time by telling Ezekiel to preach? Well, God is an improvisational God. See, God is the type of God that sees lifeless bones and knows that there is life still waiting for them. God is the, the sort of God uh, that takes the basic ingredients of life and is somehow able to create the sun and the moon and the stars in all of their array. Uh, this God is the one uh, who is able to take nothing and form it into something. This God is the God who is the one who has imbued our ancestors with the creative possibilities, again, to take an onion and some tomatoes and some rice and what the little bit of scraps are left and create gumbo. This God is the same God uh, that is able to take the horrors of slavery and yet somehow the creative genius of our people arise and we're able to sing deep river, deep river I want to go home over into campground. It is this God uh, that is able to create what looks like nothing and turn it into something. That's the sort of God that is asking Ezekiel to preach. This God is an imaginative God and has endued humanity with the possibilities of imagination and improvisation. And so the word of the Lord tells Ezekiel to prophesy. To prophesy, Reverend Stevenson, is dangerous and audacious work. It is to proclaim and to believe that God is able to do the possible with the impossible. To prophesy is the work of imagining that a new world is indeed possible and yet improvising with what you've got. To prophesy, church, is spirit speech. It is to declare the work of God over and against the ways of the world. It is to speak life in the face of death. It is to speak that which is not as though it were. And so God speaks in the middle of devastation. For God does God's best work in the middle of the impossible. For as the word of God is spoken, Ezekiel gives spirit speech. And as Ezekiel speaks God's word over that which is dead, as God ordained speech echoes forth the same speech of our ancestors that says the Lord will make a way somehow. The same speech that says greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. The same speech that said out of nothing shall become something. The same speech that said let there be light. The same speech that guided Duke Ellington's hands and wrote the brilliance of his jazz master is uh, the same spirit that filled Miles Davis and John Coltrane, the same spirit that endured Langston Hughes, the same spirit that touched David Driscoll, the same spirit that guided us over and over is the same spirit that is able to speak life into the impossible. And so as Ezekiel begins to speak, the toe bone began to become connected to the foot bone and the foot bone to the heel bone, and the heel to the ankle, and the ankle to the shin, and the shin to the knee, and the knee to the thigh, and the thigh to the hip, and the hip to the back, and the back to the shoulder, and the shoulder to the neck, and the neck to the head. Now hear the word of the Lord. And as the word of the Lord began to go forth, the spirit uh, began to move, uh, doing the work of reconstruction, placing the body back together. The spirit began to improvise and said, well, I'll take this over here, and I'll take that over there, and out of that which looked dead was life. And yet, even as the body was put back together, there was no spirit within them. It is possible, in the words of our professor, Dr. Stevenson, to be cut dead and still alive. It is possible to have a body 
but no life. It is possible to be a nation and there be no justice. It is possible to be a church and not love God. It is possible to be a society and not care for the poor. It is possible to be human and have not love within you. You can be alive and have no breath within you. The work is not completed. It is not done. It is not finished for the spirit is missing. The Bible tells us in verse 9, he said, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. Breath in this text is ruah. Ruah is the same word used for the spirit. Ezekiel here is mirroring the very act of creation. In Genesis chapter 2, Ezekiel is summoning forth the same spirit that took the chaos of creation and formed life and breathed life into dust. As Ezekiel speaks, it is the Ruah that came and formed the world, and out of darkness came light. It is the same spirit that caused the morning stars to sing together. It is the same spirit that caused palm trees to grow in the animal. Anacostia to form and the Potomac to flow. It is the same spirit that caused mountains to be formed and the oceans in their deep. It is the same spirit that now Ezekiel speaks to them and he says, do you not see the breath of God? For as God speaks, God breathes. And as God speaks, God breathes the breath of life. And into them comes the possibilities of with the breath of Ruach, there is life. And with the breath of God, there is hope. And God's spirit is now assured to an exilic people that exile is not the last word over Israel. That separation and despondency has not become the end of that journey. That with the breath of God in them, they are now able to do a new thing. What river are you sitting by this morning? And what do you see around you? Do you see a valley full of dry bones? What has Fox News told you this week? And what has CNN given you? What words has the New York Times and the Washington Post filled you with? What bones do you see? Or do you have the creative imagination to preach in the middle of exile? And as you preach, breath begins to come. And as you preach, the sound of a mighty rushing wind as on the day of Pentecost begins to blow. And as you preach, the movement of God begins to blow over your life. And you hear God say, God is not done with you yet. As you preach, do you hear uh, that the world can change and no longer will the poor be oppressed? Do you hear the Spirit of God liberating trillions in student debt? Do you hear the Spirit of God say teachers can be paid an equitable wage? Do you hear the Spirit of God say that justice can roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream? Do you hear the Spirit of God speak and tell you that there is life after life after life? Do you see a valley of bones or do you have within you the improvisational gifts of God that dare to stand and say, in the middle of the valley, I believe God. And as I believe God, I will speak death into life, hope and fear, joy and sorrow, peace and pain. Those Will you speak breath into the body? And as you speak, will you see God's spirit blow, blow, blow like a mighty rushing wind? Will you speak into the body? And as you speak, your limbs begin to move. Your hands begin to wave. Your feet begin to dance. For God is breathing life into the valley. Somebody ought to give the Lord a hand of praise this morning. 
Somebody ought to bless the Lord this morning. I know there's somebody here who knows that you thought you everything around you was dead. I know that there's people who are ready to give up and throw in the towel, but speak life into the body and watch the Spirit of God put the body back together again. Gracious and everlasting God, we thank you and we praise you this morning that there is life after life after life. And that which we thought was going to take us out is not the end of our journey. God, we thank you this morning that life is indeed possible to show us the way to the one who is the way, the truth, and the life, the one who conquered death, sin, and the grave leads us into the hope of life everlasting. Even Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. This morning, we want to extend two invitations to you. The first is this. We believe without a shadow of a doubt that Jesus indeed changes everything. That Jesus is the very one who, uh, though thought once dead, laid in the tomb, conquered death itself. And because Jesus lives, there is possibility for life in your life. And if you want to come to know Jesus, if you want to know more about this God who has come to redeem and to save and to heal and to set free, we invite you to see Reverend Thomas and I following worship. If you're worshiping in person, we invite you to comment on Facebook or on YouTube if you're worshiping online, or send us an email at info at peopleschurchucc.org. Secondly, we believe in the power of community. We need a community to belong to, a, a place where we can grow in relationship with God and with others. So if you want to join this church, if you want to make People's Church your church home, we invite you to comment on Facebook or on YouTube. Send us an email at info at peopleschurchucc.org. We're going to see Reverend Thomas and I following worship in the atrium. It's me, it's me, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my sister, not my brother, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer morning we pray for the family of Reverend Ford in her passing. Reverend Ford served People's Church faithfully and Faith UCC and the Church of the Savior and was a stalwart and a pioneer as a pastor in this city. We thank God for her life. We pray for the Mann family and the passing of Dr. Mann. His funeral will take place next Saturday at noon here at the church with a viewing at 11 o'clock in the morning. We pray for our beloved Mr. Mack, who served as a maintenance worker here at People's Church for so many years, who went on to be home with the Lord. We pray for his family, and we will share details regarding his funeral services this week. We pray for one another. We pray for our nation. We pray for our world. We pray knowing that prayer is a form of speaking breath into the bone. So let us pray. Gracious and everlasting God, before we even woke up this morning, you are already at work. Before we put the keys in the ignition or pressed order on an Uber app, before we walked into the building, your spirit was already with us. Before we were even formed in our mother's wombs, O oh God, your spirit was already with us. The psalmist writes that such knowledge is too wonderful for them, that if they were to go to the farthest depths uh, and to the highest heights, even there your hand would hold them. So hold us close this morning, God. Remind us, O oh God, that you are with us through the valley of the shadow of death. Hold the Mann family and the Ford family and Mr. Fat Max family in the comfort and the grace of your arms. Allow them to know, O oh God, your peace that surpasses all understanding. We pray, O oh God, for our nation and for our world. We pray, O oh God, that you would move upon the hearts of legislators across this nation that they would confess their wicked and selfish and evil ways and repent for doing injustice, O oh God. 
For your word tells us that if my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray, turn from their wicked ways, then you will heal the land. Heal our land, Lord. Heal us from the plague of injustice. Heal us for when we forsake the poor and the needy. Uh, heal us, God, when we are uh, so tempted to think that power is righteous rather than mercy, O oh God. Teach us the ways of Jesus. And yet, God, even as we pray for our nation and for our world and for the city, we pray for ourselves and for our neighbor. Because the person sitting next to us, God, came in with something that we don't even know. Somebody is worrying about a doctor's report, God. Somebody is grieving the loss of a loved one. Someone is wrestling with depression. Someone is wondering if there is hope for their life. Someone is wondering, uh, is there more to my life? Uh, someone is wrestling with guilt and shame. But God, touch my neighbor this morning. Let them know through the creative sounds of jazz, through the power of your word, through our prayers and through our praise that God, you are with us. That you promise to never leave us nor forsake us. And so we place our trust in you today, God. We put our hands in your hand. And as we place our hand in your hand, we trust you with our story. For you, God, are the author and the finisher of our faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the people of God say amen. Mother Mary comes to me, speaking words of wisdom, let it be. And in my darkest hour, she is standing right in front of me, speaking words of wisdom, let it be. Let it be. Let it be, let it be, let it be, speaking words of wisdom, let it be, 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 speaking words of wisdom, let it be. When the broken-hearted people living in the world agree, there will be an answer, let it be. But 
Though they may be parted, there is still a chance that they will see. There will be an answer, let it be. Let it be, let it be, let it be, let it be. There will be an answer, let it be. Let it be, let it be, let it be, let it be. Whisper words of wisdom. been blessed through music and through word our spirits are feeling nourished we are able to sense the new possibilities and I give God thanks for you Rev for what you gave to us because I don't know about you but more often than not I feel like I'm in the valley I feel like my bones are weary and I begin to wonder is there new life in this world, in my life, in this situation. For example, every time I hear about another mass shooting, I go, God, is there new life? Because I'm weary. But the thing about weariness that we learned today is just because the bones were weary, it didn't remove them from possibility. Just because the bones were brittle, it didn't remove them from new life. And so the challenge that I have for you today is that sometimes when we feel weary and feel on empty and feel like our bones are brittle, it's easy to feel like we have nothing left to give. We have nothing left to give in our voice. We have nothing left to give in our presence. We have nothing left to give financially. We, we just feel like we're on E, so there's nothing left. But the 
Bible tells us that among new possibility, God also loves a cheerful giver, and I believe that our gifts can also yield new life. I believe that when we sow faithfully of our tithe and our offering, when we do it out of that which we have left in our spirits, when we say, God, I know that I'm tired, but I'm trusting you, I believe that we witness new life. And not just here at People's, not just among the membership, but also in the neighborhood as Kids come with their parents to receive their vaccines or as we're able to give backpacks to another congregation who has a backpack drive or even in the greater world. I think about Middle Collegiate and the fact that their sanctuary burned down and we were still able to raise funds to be able to share. And they're in New York and we're here. The beauty of new life, beloved, is that it doesn't just start with us or stop with us but new life is abundant. And so today in your giving, I'm gonna ask that you give with the spirit of new life. I'm gonna ask that you give knowing that your gifts can manifest into abundance. I'm gonna ask that you give knowing that in our giving, we also worship God. And so here at People's Church, there's a few ways to give. The first method of electronic giving is you can give online at our website, peopleschurchucc.org. You'll click on online giving. You'll be prompted on how to give. Second method of electronic giving is you can give via Tithely. Tithely is an app that you can download to your smartphone or you can put in an internet browser. All you have to do is search People's Congregational United Church of Christ, and you can give directly to us there. You can also set up reoccurring gifts on Tithely if that feels like what you feel called to do. And lastly, you can always mail your gifts of tithe and offering directly to the church if you're watching us online or if you're here today and you want to leave a physical, tangible gift. At the conclusion of service, you will see our lovely trustees right here at these main doors with a basket and occasionally even one in the balcony. And you'll be able to drop your gift there on your way out. The invitation to give is because we get new life with God. It's not because I told you to. It's not even because I invited you. But it's because each of us have our own stories and our own journeys. And God is doing a new work. So will you give as you are able? Please rise in body and our spirit as we proclaim together the doxology. <laughs> If you'll turn to your neighbor, say good morning. Welcome them to People's good Church. Good morning. For those of you worshiping Welcome online. to People's. Good to see y'all. Good morning. Welcome to People's. Good to see everybody. Hey, y'all. Good morning. We love you. We appreciate you being here in worship today. Welcome. Good morning. If it's your first time, good welcome. If you're a repeat, good morning. good morning. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Well, for those welcome of you worshiping in person or online, good morning and welcome to People's Congregational United Church of Christ. We are a progressive Christian community called by faith, led by hope, and united by love to build strong and committed disciples of Jesus Christ. I just want to take a uh, pastoral privilege. Uh, some of our elders are here this morning, and it's um, delightful to see them. Miss Ginyard, Miss Whitley, Deacon yes. Boyne, uh, it is so good to see you this morning. Thank you all for coming out today. God bless you. We love you. We celebrate you. We give God thanks and praise for you and for your presence this morning. 
this is your first time worshiping with us this morning, good morning. We are delighted that you are with us today. Also noticed in the congregation this morning some special guests, Reverend Kyle Stevenson. Reverend yeah. Stevenson, good to see you this morning. We're good delighted to, to have you this morning. And also, Dr. <laughs> Amen. And Dr. Eric Williams. Dr. Williams is the curator for religion at the Smithsonian African American Museum. Uh, and an old family friend, Dr. Yes. Williams. Good, good to see you. Good to see you. Would you join me in thanking on this Jazz Sunday, yes. the Jazz Society, the, I'm gonna list them all before we clap. Okay, The Here Jazz we go. Society, the band, uh, Davey Yarborough, Esther Williams, Dr. Jefferson, the choir, and everybody who was involved in making everybody. this possible. <laughs> you join me. Thank you, Thank you. We give God thanks for you. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. And band, you are incredible. So Amen. thank you, Amen. thank you, thank Amen. you. Amen. Amen. We want to thank this morning our audio team, our tech team, our media team, Byron and Robert, who are walking around taking photos, yeah. our staff, uh, Yvette Hunter and Akeen Ingram, to our ushers and deacons, to our liturgist. Uh, Deacon Minor, uh, Deacon Dr. Downer, uh, and Skittens. Thank you so much this morning for leading us in worship. Officer Jackson, thank you for your presence each and every day. This morning, we have uh, special announcements uh, for you. I first heard about People's Congregational United Church of Christ when I was in seminary because my dear friend and church member, Catherine Stanley, grew up in this church because her dad, Dr. A. Knight and Stanley, was the pastor. Kathy gave me a book of her father's sermons, mm -hmm. and I'll never forget reading them. I'll never forget my great aunt Lucy Pierce, a lifelong congregationalist and member of Plymouth UCC in Detroit, going, oh, I know Tony, he was our associate pastor. <laughs> when I moved to Washington, D.C., I'll never forget visiting in August of 2016, sitting in the back pew of the 830 service, right back there. and Gloria Allen and Tina Blackwell were the first people to ever say hello to me. Yeah. One Sunday, my wife and I were at Rankin Chapel to hear Otis Moss III, and guess who was seated behind me? Those two. <laughs> and with incredible memories, remember that I had visited peoples. Many Sundays as a chaplain at Georgetown, I would sneak my way into the balcony to hear the choir sing and to hear the preaching. And with great delight, I was called on September 15th, 2019 to be the senior minister of this church. Peoples is a storied community of faith. We have a strong and vibrant witness to this area and to this nation and to this world. And when I was called, I entered with the hope of prayerfully serving for at least 10 years. When I accepted this call, though, none of us could imagine the shape the world would take. A global pandemic, racial reckoning, economic challenges, an attack on the capital. And through it all, we have waded through uncertain and uncharted territory. In the hiring of Reverend Thomas, we created the youngest pastoral team in the United Church of Christ. Mm -hmm. We worshiped weekly without skipping a beat. We've expanded our congregation to become a hybrid worshiping community. We have welcomed new members. We have served our city through the COVID Center, the Racial Justice Fund, uh, through partnering with our congregations in the United Church of Christ. We've expanded our worship opportunities. We have welcomed leading theological voices such as Bishop Barber and countless others to our pulpit. We have done life together at bedsides, over 50 funerals in the last two years at the communion table and in the waters of baptism. However, this experience has also been challenging and difficult. The life of a community of faith can be challenging with any pastoral transition without the added pressures of a pandemic and all that the world has seen. However, from the first day I arrived as senior minister, there was conflict, ageism, mistrust, and mistreatment. And the stress and the conflict and the challenges have taken a burden on me and my family. And I know that they've been challenging for you as well. 
And so over the last few months, my family and I have been in a period of discernment, and we feel that God is calling us to a new chapter. My commitment to serving peoples during the unsteadiness of this pandemic and our common ministry together did not waver. And yet my first commitment is to my family and to our well-being and to our flourishing. I've not been a perfect pastor. I've made many mistakes, but you have allowed me to grow as a pastor and as a scholar to test out all kinds of new ideas. You've given me lessons about pastoring and following Jesus and loving people and myself. And you have shaped me in so many ways. And so therefore, I submit my resignation as senior minister of People's Congregational Church, with my last Sunday being Sunday, September 11th. I am committed during these final weeks to doing what I can to ensure a smooth transition. For this church is more than an individual pastor. It is the body of Christ. This church has stood through pandemics and wars and pastoral transitions, and together, working with our conference ministers, with our moderators, Don Coombe, and our incoming moderator-elect, Brenda Smith, this church will continue to love God and to serve neighbor. Peoples, I'm ever hopeful about God's future for you. And I will hold you in my prayer. I will commit to a smooth transition, knowing that God will lead all of us together where God may call us to go. Rev, we give God thanks for you. Thanks for your ministry. Thanks for your gifts. Thanks for the ways that you have walked us through some really hard times. Through our grief and our uncertainty, through our trials, and through our victories. We give God thanks that you were our pastor I give God thanks for that which I have learned from you. When I came to Peoples, I prayed for two things. I prayed, one, that I could be in a congregation that would love me fully and allow me to operate in the fullness of my gifts. The second prayer that I said was, God, I want to be a part of a team. I'm not called to be a senior pastor in this moment. I'm called to be a part of a team so that I could help someone's vision, so that we together could work hand in hand, so that we could do that which God was calling us to do and prayerfully. Folks would come to know God. They would come to know the love of God. And they would be better when we left them than they were when we got them. And I know now that my assignment, too, is complete. That while the journey here has been filled with so many emotions, from the beauty to the agony, I give God thanks for the opportunity to serve on your team for the opportunity to be in collegial partnership with you, for the trust that you gave to me and my leadership in honoring my gifts. I do not take it lightly that you said yes to me. And my commitment was always to God, to the senior I would work for, and to this church. And so with that, I do believe God, too, is calling me to my next. This isn't a spur-of-the-moment decision. It's one that I've been praying about for a while, one that Rev and I have been in conversation for a while. And it's time now for my spirit to be released. I give God thanks for each and every one of you, for the beauties that we have shared, for the laughter, for the love, for the support. What this means for you all is that since Rev Sunday, last Sunday is Sunday the 11th, September 11th, my last Sunday will be Sunday, September 4th. That's next Sunday. I know it's Labor Day. I know some of y'all might be out of town. But that is what I feel the Spirit calling me to. 
I have asked for permission from Reverend Harris to preach one last sermon as executive pastor here at Peoples from your pulpit, and Rev has so graciously said yes. And so next week, I'll share my last sermon as one of your pastors, and then I will be on my way. What I know is that the Spirit of God is at work in each and every one of you, at work in us as a church and as individuals and collectively. And it is my prayer that from the time I leave to Rev's last day, that you all will shower him with your gratitude for every moment that he has walked with your families, from funerals, pastoral care, to Bible studies, to sermons, to time and time and time again. He has been faithful to you. And so my prayer is that as much as we are a team, we are also two very different individuals, even though we like the same music. <laughs> and so I hope that by me leaving on the 4th, it will give you all space to share your gratitude for your pastor, because your pastor has led you through this far. And your leadership has equipped them for what they need for the next. Amen. Our church leadership has been in conversation with the Potomac Association and the Central Atlantic Conference. And I'm going to ask several things out of you over these next few weeks. The next is I know that it's a holiday next weekend but I am asking that you will come next Sunday as we thank God for Reverend Thomas. I will tell this story briefly. But when she was called, we fought a whole lot of other churches to get her here. Woo. That's why he's been in boxing classes. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and she has brought her gifts, her love of God, her commitment to justice to this place. And Rev, you have made me a better pastor. So thank you. The conference will be working with our church leadership, again, to ensure a smooth, and successful transition. And so here's my ask. Pray for our church. Pray for our church. Not for a particular pastor, not for a particular way to be made, but that the glory of God might be made known in this church. Yeah. For here is our watchword. May God's kingdom come. God's will be done. Yeah. In Petworth as it is in heaven. So let us commit to that task and work together, looking unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. Let us pray. Gracious and everlasting God, you know the course of our journey. You know the story of our lives and the lives of your people. For God, you were there in March 1891 when a band of believers decided to set out by faith to become a people known as People's Congregational Church. You have been our God. Through dangers seen and unseen, through pastors and through wars, through pandemics, through trial and tribulation. And so, God, I pray for your people, for this church, 
that God, they will place your hand in their hands and their hands in your hands. That you will lead them to the place that you've called them to go. I pray for the Reverend Mahogany S. Thomas. For God, you have been her God from the first moments of her life. You are still authoring her, her story. We thank you for her brilliance, for her commitment to the gospel, for the preached word, for the way that she has always, from the first day, invited us to love one another by speaking dignity into us, by calling us beloved, for that is who we are. Thank you for her gifts. Thank you for her life. Strengthen her in the days to come. May we shower her with love and remind her, O oh God, that she is your child that your journey is being written even now in her life. Yes, God. We commend ourselves to you, O oh God. We surrender ourselves and our lives in this very church and this world to you. For God, there is no one like you. No one. There is no one like you. No one. You are a holy God and a righteous God. Yes, you are. And I thank you for the opportunity to pastor these, your people. Yes, God. Through waters we have never walked through before, God, you have kept us. Through the dangers of a pandemic, through the storms, through the losses of countless members of this church, God, you have kept us. For the places where I failed and I've not been faithful and I did not love your people in the way that I should have forgiven me. For the ways that we did not follow you and trust you and lean into your own understanding. Have mercy on us. But you, God, are a wonderful and compassionate God. Yes, you are. And you are not done with us. The journey is still unfolding. And there is indeed life after life, yes, there is. after life, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, yes, God. one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
invite you now to please rise in body or in spirit as we receive our benediction. Here at People's Church, we lift our hands as a sign of receiving God's blessings. Beloved of God, what do you see? Do you see a valley full of dry bones? Or do you see the possibilities of God over your life? So speak. Speak God's word into the void. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May God cause God's face to shine down upon you and be gracious unto you. May God lift up the light of God's countenance upon you and give you peace and give you peace, and give you peace. In the name of God, the one who created you and formed you out of nothing and breathed life into you. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who has redeemed us from sin, hell, and the grave. And in the name of the Holy Spirit, the one who leads us into life everlasting. Let all of God's people say amen. 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 And amen. You may be seated for the post -lead.
Amen, amen, amen. Beloved, we love you, and more importantly, God loves you. Go in peace.